Yo, collect and connect with Blake and Chad. Blake and Chad. 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 And Blake. Collect and connect. Blake and Chad's collect and connect. Which one? Frank goes to Blake and Chad. This is Blake and Chad. This is Collect and Connect. How you doing? My name is Blake. Um, that's Chad over there. Uh, welcome to Blake and Chad's Collect and Connect. Uh, pretty much. So uh, here you're going to be in Designer Con, huh? Yeah. That's pretty sweet. That's pretty sweet. I just saw those skate decks you just released out there. Yeah. I mean, those are my first um, skate decks. But uh, I might do some more, actually. Last minute. Different designs. Oh man, I love skate decks. So. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Are you gonna do some more for Designer Con, or what is it for? Just for Designer Con, yeah. Right, yeah, right now, nice. Designer Con is the only show that I do. Um, there's a couple others that I have in mind, but um, for now, that's like really all I want to make time for. Awesome, awesome. Are you based out of California? Yeah, I'm in LA. Okay. I think uh, we're trying to make a trip for ourselves to get out to Designer Con. So uh, that'll be pretty cool if we can get out there to maybe meet you face to face and check out what you got in your booth. And it uh, looks like you're in booth number 1931. Yeah. All right. That's, uh, that might change, but okay. you know, if that does, I'll, I'll post it on my Instagram. Right. Perfect. So what kind of uh, projects are you currently working on? Uh, just the skate decks or? Um. Well, for Designer Con, I have like tons of merch that are at the printers now. So, you know, there's bags and shirts and, you know, sticker sets. I'm really into making sticker sets. So that's kind of a, a big thing for me. Awesome. You know, I used to make art prints, but um, I think people gravitate more towards stickers for some reason. So that's kind of what I've been like focusing on it and that I just love stickers in general you know growing up you know as a kid stickers were the shit you know that's <laughs> yeah for sure yeah. I remember I was, sticker I, books yeah exactly I always thought it was a big responsibility though because you know you have this like badass piece of art and you don't know where to put it you know and it's like you want it to be in the right place but that's kind of how I treat these stickers as well as like, I want them to be like a piece of art in themselves awesome. and you know i want people to look at it and be and be like oh man i don't want to take one sticker off of this sheet because it'll like you know yeah yeah, Ruin that yeah i have a few stickers myself now and i don't know where to put them i don't really want to put them anywhere because i don't want them to end up not having them in the future right <laughs> like i don't know what to put these on yet yeah yeah my my kid you can see on my piece right here he just tapped yeah. up the stickers from uh <laughs> uh sket one stuff so but yeah. yeah we uh we've been dabbling into uh connecting with the community now uh especially through decon um i don't know if you've seen part of our show yet but we've connected with uh ron english and luke chu and dave presser right. and quite a few artists throughout the the circle now and uh now our plan is to actually come out to designer con um how many years have you been doing designer con personally um this might be my fourth maybe fifth time at designer con um first time was you know starting at just like a regular table then it moved on to a booth i believe but um yeah it's been kind of growing as the years have gone like i've been accumulating more and more merch and um yeah it's exciting you know i, I designer con is my favorite show hands down we keep hearing that it's like the bomb so now yeah. you, you were there before pandemic so you've probably seen it when it was high then you know sort of the wave right so this year i'm here it's going to be like because we're part of uh vivi uh it's an nft app that's how me and chad found each other he's in canada 
I'm down here yeah. in Florida and uh, we connected through this app and we started this show and we're heading out there because of these NFTs. Do you dabble into NFTs yourself or? No, not yet. Not yet? Yeah. yeah it's so. something I'm, I've been looking into, but at the moment I'm not like, my headspace isn't there for it yet. Like I just have so much other stuff, you know, on my plate that it's like adding one more thing is something that I, you know, it'll, it'll break me right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're still wrapping our head around it. That's for sure. Yeah. definitely. Yeah, I can imagine. It's definitely a learning process. <laughs> so yeah, I noticed you have, you've been working on a graphic novel, Wiggly 83. How's that been coming along? Good. I'm like maybe a, third of a way of the way into it you know it's probably about 160 pages um it's a lot of work um you know when you think of comics you know people just kind of like maybe scoff at it because it's it's comics you know it's like what they consider kid stuff but you know it you know over the years it's also like gained a lot of respect in certain circles but yeah you know that's it's an art form that i'm into so yeah, I've been working on that for maybe a year now. And it's been stewing in my head for the longest time. It's it's basically like a story about my childhood growing up in LA in um like basically a crack neighborhood. And you know, I, I lived in this uh, this apartment building with like just a bunch of characters and that's kind of what it's about. There's just you know, there's a lot of uh um yeah, there's just a lot of characters in there. Awesome. You know, when you live in, in a shitty neighborhood, in an apartment, people come and go, like, constantly. So there's all these, like, there's a lot of trouble that comes and, and like, just, you know, some bizarre people. So that's kind Eat of, like, <laughs> yeah, that's 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 kind of what um what happens in, 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 in part of that book. Gotcha. Gotcha. Would you be planning to release this book next yeah. year at Designer Con, or would that be another process for... Oh, man. <laughs> i mean i don't know if i'll be done by then okay. you know there's yeah. there's um because like for the last three years, years for... i'm sure your novel takes years i'm sure oh yeah yeah it does but um i think if because what i'm doing is i'm actually drawing the whole thing in black and white and then um you know i'm considering coloring it which would be another like you know six months or something like that so um we'll see that sounds yeah I, i'd like i'd like to be done with it as soon as i can but you know i also, also have a day job so there's there's that yeah, yeah for sure that's a that's a side piece right there right right <laughs> so your your los focos on instagram and your socials where can we find you on your social medias and instagram do you have tiktoks and all the good stuff uh, just Instagram okay. under Los Focos. Um, I also have a website, losfocos.com, which, you know, has my portfolio and a shop. Yeah, um, okay, it's where you can get your merch. Right. Okay, awesome. Yeah, we'll definitely portion that in and get your website in here and hopefully get some people to go click and check out your stuff. You know, that's what we want. We want people to go to your cool. source and check you out. Cool. Is there a, is there a meaning behind Los Focos? Um. Not really. It was uh, the name came from uh, back when I first started working in, in design and um, I needed a portfolio. I didn't have a portfolio at the time. I was trying to get this job and I registered losfocus.com as like this fake uh, band and I created the entire website for this fake band. And yeah, it got me the job. And, you know, I, at the end, I had this URL and I was like, I just kept adding, you know, some dumb shit to it. And experimental stuff and art and then it just kind of grew from there there you go oh that's awesome how long have you been branding los focos wow um yeah, maybe like 15 years wow how long has the internet been around <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome because you know we always talk about making that transition to you know, keep your name as, you know, and, you know, a business. And that's a big step right. for a lot of people. Do you have any messages for any people that are doing art that, you know, take that step? Um, yeah, I mean, so many things to say. I mean, mostly like 
do what it is that you you like you know don't follow trends um yeah and if if even when it comes to like you know picking a name for yourself like you know do something that that, that appeals to you that's it right yeah, yeah i mean cool. when you take on that name and you become most focus you know you got to really become it because you're branding and i you know, I have a company as well, and everywhere I go, I'm, hey, I'm this person, and, you know, branding is huge right. because, you know, being consistent, going to the decons and doing what you're doing in 15 years, you know, you're branding yourself and branding Los Focos, and that's important because, you know, where you, you, know, you want to be in five more years or 10 more years, you know, and that's even bigger for yeah. you, for sure. Yeah, I mean, when I first started, I never thought I would keep the name, and it's kind of stuck. And I know that people refer to me as Los Focos. And to me, that's kind of like a different identity in a certain way. But that's essentially me. Um, I have a friend that kind of is involved every once in a while. Um, but it's essentially um, like me. Awesome. Yeah. And they're actually for DesignerCon, they're um, starting this little brand, like a little side brand too. So, you know, just they're always experimenting and trying new things. Yeah. The Coming up. Are you thinking of coming out with some physical pieces, like some art toys? It, it could lead to toys, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's awesome. That would be the plan and, 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 and the dream. Cool. How many of those uh, Doom skate decks did you make? Um, pretty sick, man. I love skate well, decks. So. What's funny is I've shown, a, <laughs> I've shown like friends and family, and, and I've already sold like five. <laughs> I'm only gonna have like maybe twenty at, at the end of the day. All right. Yeah. Before you get out there, you got another month to go. You'll have like ten when you get out there now. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I was trying not to show it to anyone because I knew that people were gonna want it. Need a few. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Hey, I love the colors. The the colorway on that is is perfect with the roses and everything. Thanks. Yeah. I actually have I have the deck here. Oh. Let's oh, see here we go. Yes, please. Yeah. Oh man. Look oh, at that. that's so cool. Definitely save one. Um, if I'm if I'm out there, I'll definitely be grabbing one. Yeah, I I'll got, save one. Got a nice you. collection on my wall going here. He got sketch one behind him, and uh, you know that's how we're starting. I think skate deck collecting now. So <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna have a nice wall, and that would be a lovely collection for that one. How long did that take you to make that one? Roughly. Um, I mean, probably like you know what's funny is that. I usually I'm pretty fast, but for some reason this one was one that was like it took some real like uh, brain cells to like <laughs> like finish it, and uh, if, if for some reason things I can finish things pretty quickly, and and this one just wouldn't come out. It was a well, that was your your first one you said right like right yeah so you definitely took your 15 years and just put it right there on that board. Oh, yeah, it, I mean it had that curve on it too, so it's definitely a little. I like you're saying different. To yeah, it, it probably took me maybe sixteen hours total to like finish it, just because there were so many re revisions on it. Yeah, so it, it's it's a a print on the board. Or you drew each. It's one? a print. Yeah. <laughs> yeah All right, that's awesome. Do you plan that stuff? Like, how long does it take before you create something, or like, do you spend time planning it, or you just kind of start drawing and see what comes um i mean it really depends but most of the time it's it's in my head already gotcha. you know, and it's sometimes um it's not that i because i'm not someone who sits down and sketches stuff out and plans it's just like it's already in my head and it just needs to come out nice so yeah, how long sure. are you drawing all day or what do you do on the weekends do you go out and well i mean i do draw or... right? i i do I, I work for as an illustrator, so oh, that's what I do. Awesome. So the the moment I clock out, I clock into like Los Focos. <laughs> nice. Awesome. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Definitely. What happened, Jeff? Yeah. Do you, but, do you do you have a specific color palette that you like to work with in your work? Uh, not really, but you know, a lot of times for I think for a lot of artists is that they get stuck in a certain um, in a certain color palette or they use a uh, certain iconography like you know 
like my giant, for instance, you know, is always using snakes and, um, you know, people just do gravitate towards certain things, but I, I like bright colors, but w when it comes to doing sticker sets, I like to focus on what the item is and what the brand is. Um, yeah. what are, you know, it's, it, it's very branded as far as a sticker set is like, I focus on what that is. Gotcha. You've worked with quite a few brands already now, like some fairly big brands. So you did some work with Daytona 500. Yeah. Um, Daytona, I mean, so many Nike. Yeah. You name Nike it. there. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. That's cool. Yeah. That's pretty cool. So what's the feeling when you get those calls? Like, I mean, you work hard, you go day in and day out. Like you said, you clock in and clock back in, clock out, you know, I mean, as an artist and inspiring, like I love to draw and man, if I were to get those and. Right. Know, I mean, sometimes they're, they're flattering for sure. Um, but most of the time my, my brain goes straight into this mode of like, not exactly panic mode, but like, I just kind of focus on, on getting the job done. Get back on your toes real fast. Like, oh yeah, I mean, cause you have to, you, you have to produce at a certain level, you know, for instance, Nike, their quality control is like the highest that I've probably ever worked. You know, their creative directors, like they make you work for that money. <laughs> they really do. And, and then when you look at the product, you're like, oh shit, no wonder they pushed me that far. That looks way better. Um, even when you think you're done, you're not done. You know, they'll tell you like, you need to keep pushing up it. One more. Just do yeah. it, right? <laughs> and then there are the other clients where you just turn it in and it's like done. And uh, e even with clients on their level, you know, but um, yeah, it, it's um, it's a big responsibility to produce for stuff like that. So when they come to you and, and they're like, you know, we need A, B and C done, like you, you can't go into it with any like self doubt. You know, I know a lot of people, a lot of artists struggle with that or or like, um, you know, they they feel like they run out of ideas. It's, it's it's never been that for me. I just, once the project comes in, like you just produce. You got that work mentality right there. So. Yeah, I mean, you, you have kids to feed and like yeah. rent to pay. Like I, I, the last thing I want to do is panic. <laughs> well, that's good. You know, you work hard for those moments. And when they come in, like you said, you absorb them and you work hard and then you release the product. You see the final product. You're like, oh that's amazing and then you know next project and you know like yeah. you said you know you, you keep going forward and you know then, then the next project comes up you get back on your toes and you do the same thing and that's yeah. where that experience comes in and you know you know just, and the thing yeah. about these these type of clients too is that they come to you because they've seen your work already and they know what you're capable of what you like to do they're not going to ask you to do something that you've never done before yeah, so like when i get this 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 uh art direction brief i can look at it and i'll be like oh this is fun like i can i can definitely knock this out that's what's up yeah because it's it's what you do you love to do it and you say you're doing it almost probably 20 hours a day so it's it's natural for you that's that's what's up so yeah <laughs> all right so all the collaborations you have done already are there any collaborations you want to do with anyone in the future? Wow. Um, to decons or I know, I know connecting at decons are big. Um, so, right. I mean, at this point, like toys is the one thing that I would like to, to dabble in. Cause I, I mean, I have like tons of ideas for stuff like that, but you, you know, I realize that going the toy route, that's like, that's an expensive route. You know, making toys is very pricey. Uh, I've gone around Design Con and I, I'm just asking some of the the creatives, uh, the toy makers there, what it takes. And um, like, I would like to partner with someone to go into that for sure, because it's, you know, it's so. To me, it's it's like a, they're sculptures. You know, it's it's Definitely. a piece of art. 
Mm -hmm. um, re regardless if it's like cutesy or whatever, like that's that's a piece of art to me. Yeah, they put their time into it and their hands and yeah, it's definitely. Yeah. I love I love the physicals. We love collecting them and definitely we're starting, we're starting to get too much behind us in the wide <laughs> <guy, I guess. laughs> yeah. but yeah you're right i mean this is an art piece that even if they made a hundred of them they made a hundred with their hands you know and that's yeah. that's definitely worth watching and looking at when you're at these cons i can't wait to go i'm gonna be just like what a great just, skill yeah just just looking at these pieces and enjoying everything i see out there you guys haven't been to designer con yet no never okay. No, I, I'm in Florida, like he's, he's in Canada. So we really learned about designer con through the VV app. And we started realizing that, man, these are, you know, all your artists are at these designer cons. And right. we connect oh. with quite a few and we really want to make it as a show out there to, you know, do some live stuff and just chat around and see what it's like the atmosphere because every single person we've interviewed has just been just like you, you know, just going every year every hour they can putting their work out in time and your art and man that's that pumps me up more than anything like man it just makes me go harder at what i do because i see everyone else doing it every time we interview it's like it just it just rubs off for sure <laughs> so yeah, yeah i'm pumped to try to get out there i already bought the ticket i just gotta get the plane ticket and hotel now <laughs> <laughs> yeah you sometimes because uh I used to go to designer con I would attend the show before I started um, um, exhibiting and you would just leave that place kind of amped because there's just so much like creativity and uh, yeah, eventually that's, you know, what made me decide that I wanted to start exhibiting there. Awesome. That atmosphere, I can just imagine how it is when you're there.